God damn, I hope I'm in focus. Because I don't want to waste any of yours time. I wear these costumes. I know I look ridiculous. But as far, you know, in this world of entertainment and, sh and, and stuff like that, I mean, you know, I don't have much props. I don't have much. Uh, you see, it's windy. You may not even be hearing me now because uh, the wind comes in here. I'm like, this is like gorilla. This whole broadcast thing is like gorilla. And uh, what I mean by that, besides being a gorilla myself, one of the many great prime examples of naked acre. But I'm, uh, you know, I'm also, uh, you know, I'm trying to give you as much information, but also I don't want you to be bored. You've got to be worried about people being bored these days. Well, we're not going to be bored anymore. Rachel Maddow keeps saying it all the time. And believe me, again, I'm not a, a sycophant with her either. Believe me, I get on her case all the time. I said, she says, send us letters. I send her letters, and I get on her case when I feel it's uh, necessary. Not that I'm the expert. But here's the deal. Um, when you're uh, watching her every day, and she says stuff like, now is the time to pay attention. Now is the time to pay attention. Now... I, I really appreciate anyone who tunes into this, this uh, broadcast. Ooh, sorry. Anyone who turns into this broadcast. I especially appreciate if any young people are tuning in. Because I guarantee you I'm not one of these... Sorry. I'm not one of these, these old people who's jealous because I'm on my way out. And you're still going to be around. I hate to say this, but I feel like we're not doing you any favors. I hope uh, for the fact that you're going to still be around, and I'll and our, us baby bunglers are going to be moldering in our grave. And again, folks, if I'm, I don't have one of these microphones, extension microphones, so um, I'll try to keep the wind. I don't want you to be listening to this. And you can't hear me because of the wind. That's the gorilla thing again. So I want to say to you all out there, who, whoever you are, and there's a lot of great people out there, and uh, we have about seven days left before the shit Earth or Bastard takes over. And when I mention a perfect storm, I mentioned that word before. There was this really fine movie I think it was directed by William Pedersen, if I'm not mistaken. It starred uh, Mark Wahlberg and George Clooney, and it's, it's called The Perfect Storm. It had a wonderful music score, by the way, by the late, great James Horner. And it's a, based on a true story about this weather system that came in that was a combination of ingredients that created a perfect storm, this weather system, a perfect storm of such destructive weather power and uh, they had they focus in on a couple of uh, hapless uh, folks at sea uh, one was a the main story of course is the fishing boat that was going out to do and they were doing their jobs but whoa what a, the perfect storm and what we and I bring this up because what we've just had is a perfect storm a political calamity Everything came together perfectly to create a storm of destruction. See, this is what happened. Uh, sh uh, she won the popular vote by three million, but she needed to win the electoral college. And then she lost that. In combination with the fact that 50%, only 50%, 50%, 50% of the entire country voted. And as Keith Olbermann has said many, many times, and I'm not a sycophant with him either, but I, I really love his work, he said that this was the most one of the most important elections since the Civil War. 
uh, we had a wacko running against someone who was a traditionalist. You know, uh, you know, they considered a quote-unquote establishment thing. All right. People, for whatever reason, I mean, I hated him. Her, I felt bad for. She was she. She would have been a, a much. I'm telling you. All the wonderful things have been going on. I mean, look, I'm sitting in my backyard right now, enjoying my backyard. I wouldn't own a home today if it wasn't for the policies of the Obama administration. And believe me, my friends, I despise politicians. I despise them because most of the time they're talking out of two sides of their face. But this last president, I realized there's things that I don't like. I'm not a, I'm not a sycophant with him either. But I'm telling you, the great policies. And what happened was, this perfect storm of political catastrophe came in. <laughs> it was like the worst, it's like a horrific thing. Um, the combination of this electoral college bullshit and people staying away. And then you had, of course, a, a, the, the, this, I have to add, the Citizen United the Koch brothers, remember that name behind the scenes? Gerrymandering by the GOP, voter suppression by the GOP. They've been fighting Obama since he came into office. And when that piece of birther shit says he wants to make America great again, he really wants to make America white again. Right now, his party is busy at work, working more than they've ever worked before. Bitch McDumbbell and Paul and Ryan, Ayn Ryan, they get hard-ons every morning for the first time in their, in their miserable existences. Just the idea of destroying every social program all the way back to the New Deal and beyond. To cover this planet in slags and slags and gallons of oil to give to you kids a future of anguish and pain. And last but not least, this birther bastard that's coming in, he's a psycho. He is suffering from a mental illness. See the perfect storm? We would have never voted for a shithead like that if 50% of the people, if 100% of the people voted. If this was the 40s, if this was the 50s, Okay, if this was the Watergate era, never in a thousand, never in a million years would we have put a piece of shit, a piece of birther bastard into office like that. We would have never done that. But the perfect storm. Now in this, uh, this piece of shit, he disrespects everything, this birther bastard Trump, everything about our country. He doesn't even want to be president cleanly. It's more important that he keeps his money than he puts everything in a blind trust and liquidates everything. Everything, his family, everything. It's, they, there's no Trump names anywhere. Because this person is sick, he's a fascist, and, he's a, and worst of all, he's mentally ill. He's, I would say he's criminally insane. Now, I'm not a psychiatrist. I look at the way he behaves. I grew up with people who had problems, my parents. And you know, I, I, I take my share of my uh, antidepressant. So I look at this guy and I'm telling you right now, I'm looking at this birther bastard, Trumpian piece of toad, I mean not toad, toads, I love toads. Animal, sorry, I mean piece of turd. I look at that person and I say, this is very dangerous, especially when he wa talks about nuclear weapons. Get threads, T, H R E A D S, directed by Mick Jackson and written by Barry Hines. The BBC has it locked up. It's only available in Region Two, unless you get pirated copies. And the Region One, a uh, Region Two that's dead, that you could get, it's not the director's approved edition. But everybody on this planet, forget about the day after. See threads. That should be. Di that should be uh, uh, disseminated throughout this entire world because this sick piece of shit's gonna blow up this planet if not get us into another war or have another building blow up with 3,000 people in it because he doesn't attend security briefings and he wants to privatize even his security detail.
If that ain't fascism, my friend, I, my friends, I don't know what is. But he's dangerous, and I'm talking to you young people out there. You've got to wake up. You, like Rachel Maddow says, you have to pay attention right now because this is a dangerous, dangerous piece of shit that's coming in in seven days. And I'm going to tell you, this is also dedicated to someone who, who also who, who listens to me. When we get rid of this birther bastard, we mean his entire cabinet and his VP who's also dangerous. I'm doing this for someone who wrote to me on my page. This Pence Christian extremist terrorist, there I said it, piece of shit, we got to get rid of everything. Impeach this this traitor, this Trump, and the, this traitor, and also get rid of his his cabinet and that that VP religious fanatic. Okay, and that's for you, my friend. When you wrote me, I understand. We have to get rid. We have to clean it out. This is a sad time, and it only came in because some of us were asleep. Sadly, I'm not blaming them. Some of us were asleep, didn't realize how much we sadly, all of us, contributed to this perfect storm. It's a war now. We have to fight to keep our country the way we want it to be. Great, not necessarily white. <laughs> P.S. Someone else wrote me, and I, out of respect to them, uh, no, I don't hate white people. I do not hate white people. Look at me. I'm as pale as you can get. But for, for centuries, the white people never considered Jewish people to be officially white. And honestly, I'm very proud of that because, uh, frankly, the original Jewish people were people of color. I'm not, when I said, make America great, not necessarily white, <laughs> what I meant was, and I, I, I don't have to really explain myself, is I don't see what's so great about what whites have done for this country, all right? They gave us something, these white Europeans, but we lost something too. And, and, and what I'm telling you straight, based on all my readings in 1984 and all that stuff, I'm telling you right now, sorry about this, I want to get this very short. Uh, when that piece of birther shit says, make America great again, he just really means make America white again. I'm telling you, I, I, that's what he really means. Because he represents a group of slime that want to keep black people and everybody that's not rich also enslaved. Okay, thank you. You know, I hope I uh, explained it.